The next tropical storm of 2024 has formed in the Gulf of Carpentaria. Tropical Storm 19P has yet to receive a name, but it is expected that it will receive a name in the next few hours. It is a tropical storm, as I said, in the Gulf of Carpentaria right now, moving very slowly off towards the south. It is a pretty significant threat to portions of the Gulf of Carpentaria coastline in about two days. It's forecast to make landfall as a hurricane force storm. However, right now it's got winds of 60 miles per hour and a pressure of 989 millibars moving pretty much due south at this time at 7 miles per hour. We are Ticos Code Yellow, high end, two points off of Code Orange, believe it or not, so live coverage on the storm may be possible as it comes into the coastline. So here's where the storm is located right now, 13.8 degrees south, 137.8 degrees east. Uh, those numbers are about a little bit out of date, have to be said, so it's probably a little bit farther south than that, probably 13.9. Nonetheless, it is 117 miles away from East Arnhem, 134 from Palo Islands, 155 from Maria Island, 186 from Barolula, and 477 from Darwin. And the storm poses a pretty significant threat to portions of the coastline as it is forecast to make a pretty significant landfall, Category 3 on the Australian scale, severe so tropical cyclone in about two days from now, albeit it isn't forecast to move very much, uh, or very quick movement speed as it does so. So this is what the wind field looks like right now, fairly large on the uh, northeastern side at 130 nautical miles. Cyclone warnings and watches are in place right now, cyclone warning. Uh, from the Aliangula to the Northern Territory South Wigan border, including Borolola, but not including Dunkirkur. And a cyclone watch for the Northern Territory South Wigan border to Mornington Island, including Mornington Island, and adjacent parts of the district as well. So what the primary hazards right now for the storm is right now, you can, there's a lot to take in, so uh, heavy rainfall is going to be the absolutely number one threat for this storm, we could see up to 400 millimeters, which is a lot of rainfall, given that the, the storm is forecast to move very slowly, which is uh, pretty significant, up to 16 inches of rainfall, maybe even a little bit higher than that, believe it or not, uh, over inland areas as the storm pushes inland. Uh, also given that the storm is forecast to make a pretty significant landfall, we are forecasting damaging winds as well. Uh, residents are strongly urged to prepare for winds over 90 miles per hour, sustained winds of 90 miles per hour, probably gusts well in excess of 100 miles per hour in the landfall zone, which is a pretty significant given that this uh, this area has not experienced a storm this strong or a, 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 this intensity of a landfall in quite some time. So here's what the, uh, our latest track forecast is calling right now. Uh, very quick identification has to be dead into a Category 1 storm on the Thapper Simpson scale. Peaking at landfall as a Category 2 could be a little bit low uh, forecast at the moment. We are forecasting 100 miles per hour. Could be a little bit higher than that, has to be said, um, at landfall. We'll have to wait and see on that, though. Um, and quickening as it moves inland, as is pretty normal for these storms as they move into further, um, further inland into Australia. This is what the latest one Typhoon Warning Center forecast is saying right now for the storm. They are forecasting a 90 mile per hour peak. Uh, we've gone just a little bit higher um, based on the initial intensity primarily being higher. Uh, you see you only have 40, 45 miles per hour for this storm right now. I imagine they've probably increased it to 50 miles per hour for their, uh, their uh, ZRZ ATCF fix, but still they are hopelessly behind in terms of intensity estimates for this storm right now. And this is why. You can see uh, on this slide now that the satellite estimates are saying that this storm is probably pushing 65 miles per hour to be honest now. Uh, TWC is still hopelessly behind, and the Bureau of Meteorology uh, just updated. They have it with uh, sustained winds near the center of 75 km per hour with gusts to 100 km per hour. Obviously, that is in 10 minutes sustained winds, uh, but they have got those winds, of course, uh, for the solar system right now. So looking at the latest DFS model run here, very quickly uh, makes landfall uh, very slow moving here. You can see it doesn't really move very much compared to its uh, current position versus landfall in the grand scheme of things. Um, the movement speed around 7 miles per hour to the south is intended to be around that right up until landfall. It might even slow down a little bit as it comes to the coastline. But generally, after it makes landfall, it is intended to pick up pace uh, very gradually as it heads off uh, pretty much due westward after landfall has to be said. And of course will weaken as it goes inland as most systems typically do. Um, so, so a little bit of question marks on uh, what, uh, how strong the storm gets prior to landfall. We'll have to wait and see on that though. Um, this storm could be anywhere from a mid-range Category 1 to potentially a high-end Category 2 at landfall, has to be said, uh, given the uh, favorable conditions that the storm is right now and given the current satellite appearance of this storm. You can also see the, uh, the outer edges of 18S that are on the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, Left-hand side, I should say. That's not a threat to land, thankfully. 
So you what we're seeing right now for sea surface temperatures for the storm right now, upwards of 30 degrees Celsius, maybe even pushing 32 as you get closer to the, the coastline here. So sea surface temperatures are not going to be an issue at all for this storm, believe it or not, up until the storm makes landfall. So sea surface temperatures more than enough for the storm to continue to intensify, and given this low movement, that's going to enhance that um, favorability due to those sea surface temperatures, and it will only uh, allow the storm to take more um, advantage or take advantage of those sea surface temperatures more. Surface observations aren't really suggesting very much right now. We've got a uh, surface observation reading of 1,003 millibars just to the northwest of the center of circulation at this time. So uh, we're not really seeing a whole lot, and we aren't really getting, unfortunately, a whole lot of observations in the landfall zone. So it is uh, um, unfortunate that there aren't any land any uh, stations there recording observations. So we'll have to wait and see what that uh, what these stations say as the storm comes into the coastline and uh, what observations we do end up getting. I imagine that's probably more on the Bureau of Meteorology website. This is what we're seeing right now for the REM diagnostic plot. Fairly certain on where the storm's going to go uh, in terms of the track. So that's a good thing. We're pretty confident that this storm is going to uh, make landfall pretty much in that general region. Although a bit of a question mark on how on where it goes once it moves inland. GFS is it further south. AWR is it closer um, towards Darwin. Albeit it's still a pretty significant distance away from Darwin itself. The intensity uh, forecast a little bit uncertain. You can see the, both the GFS and HWRF do not bring this storm up towards Category 1 status at all. Although I, I think that the JTWC forecast is pretty much right on the money for this storm right now. Um, comparing with other models as well. Um, category 2 on, the, on our forecast, of course. Uh, wind shear is not going to be much of an issue. It is a little bit of a problem, but I think that the overall other conditions should mitigate that a little bit. Uh, C2 parameters, again, not going to be an issue at all for this storm. 30 degrees Celsius right now, not going to change at all. Maybe even are going to increase a little bit as it heads into land. And relative humidity is going to remain favorable all the way up until landfall. So though, so a pretty, pretty straight shot for this storm to get up towards Category 1 status. Will it get to Category 2 status? We'll have to wait and see on that. That is indeed on our forecast with this big density of this storm storm. In about two days from now as it makes landfall. A lot of time for this storm to intensify. Uh, two days is quite significant time for these kind of systems. You know how it is in this kind of business. So here's what we're seeing right now for the satellite imagery of this storm right now. You can see that it's it's got a, um, a big convective burst on the northern side of the circulation, which is uh, a pretty s a strong, significant sign of a uh, 50 to 60 mile per hour tropical storm. Satellite estimates are already pushing 65, as I said before. So chances are the storm is pushing 65 miles per hour right now. And you can see there that there are some signs there on the latest frame that this might be trying to wrap around on the southern side. So maybe we're starting to see the um, the start of a significant intensification phase. Maybe not. We'll have to wait and see on that. Of course, um, the storm is moving quite slowly and does have the conditions to uh, significantly intensify. Just needs the um, the storm itself to um, overcome its conditions. And uh, is a pretty significant threat towards portions of the, um, the lower qu uh, coastline here. In the Gulf of Carpentaria, a significant impact is possible over the next few days. Look at the visible imagery, you can see that core much clearly developing there, just to the top of that big convective burst. And um, I imagine that the storm will be continuing to intensify over the next two days as it pushes off towards the south here. A pretty significant threat, and a big rainfall threat, certainly, for portions of the uh, Gulf of Carpentaria coastline over the next few days. Well, for the updates on the storm as it pushes off towards the south here, and potential live coverage as it comes into the coastline, you can stay tuned to our outlets. Google us on uh, Twitter, slash YouTube, slash Facebook, at 413, and we'll have further updates on the storm as it pushes out towards the south.